this. And hopefully it stays. Okay, starting again, sorry for my people in the live audience. Um, one of the things that's special about the United States and what we're building up for the United States is how the United States becomes a superpower. And for most people, they think this superpower comes about militarily, but it comes about economically. By the end of this chapter, by the end of chapter four, the United States is an economic superpower. So how does that occur and why and what um, uh, conditions in the United States makes that makes the United States a place where that happens. Also makes a place uh, where uh, entrepreneurs and inventors can flourish. So if we, and that's going to be part of our assignment today, looking at inventions, when we look at all these inventions that are created in the United States, it needs to give cause to why does that happen here? Why does that not happen in other places? And part of it is capitalism and that entrepreneurship and open markets. So we're going to look at this idea of innovation. And innovation means um, inventing new things or creating better and efficient things that will drive our nation. Oh, you can't say anything. You guys are just staring at me. Somebody say, hey, can't see anything. Oh, that was too far. There we go. <clears throat> Innovation drives the nation because what I see, I can see it. So we're looking at two things. Innovation. Innovation means to bring about new things. So if we think about the United States and how the United States is an innovative country. So for instance, the car I drove, well, I didn't drive a car in my junior year, so let's pretend we're all seniors. Um, my senior year, the car I drove to school, how would I have put my window down if I wanted some fresh air? I would have had to roll it down, right? Or, let's see if you know this one, if I wanted to change my radio station, what would I have done? Anybody know that one? Anybody? You could have twisted the knobs, but the easier way if I had presets that I wanted to go to my favorite stations. Anybody have a guess? Press the number. No, no. You're close. You're going to press something. You're going to press a great big button. So a radio at that time was, was the dial was, was um, analog so that when you scrolled the button, it moved stations. But you preset it with, with um, buttons. Anyone ever seen a jukebox before with buttons you push? It looks like that, except they're long. It was very dangerous to do while you were driving, just like rolling your window down was very dangerous to do when you were driving. Um, most all of us had stick shift. How many of you have stick shifts that you have to drive? So we all had to learn how to drive on stick shift, which is not that fun for those of you. Not that we didn't have automatics, but for, for cheap cars for kids um, <clears throat> we had to learn to drive uh, a stick shift so these innovations that are in your car that provide absolutely no um, airbags our steering wheels or little teeny skinny things that you could slide your hands around so this idea of innovation is important the but what makes that even more important is protection so when you do create something when you do invent something a patent protects your invention. So for um, a time period, which is probably, I gosh, I don't know what it is. I don't even want to say. When you uh, create something, it's yours exclusively. So how many of you have grandmas or great grandmas that refer to anything plastic that you put food in with a lid as Tupperware? No matter what it is, it's always Tupperware. <clears throat> and that's because Tupperware invented that whole idea of a plastic container with some kind of seal that pops or closes. And for a period of time, Tupperware was the only one that could market that type of um, product for their patent rights. And so that's why it was sell, sold at home and parties and it was so exclusive and Tupperware made tons of money because they were the only one that could sell um, um, containers like that. Once the patent goes away, then it's available to everybody. In your lifetime, Velcro. So when Velcro first came out, it was Velcro. And if you used Velcro on anything, you had to pay Mr. Velcro, I don't know what his name is, to use his Velcro. His patent is now gone, and now you see Velcro on everything. So that's one of the things that protects people in the United States from, in, from people taking their inventions. <clears throat> and patents, um, 
are, are still an important part of this innovation. And people apply for patents all the time when they are creating new uh, inventions. Over time, no one else, over that time period, no one else can manufacture or sell your invention. Uh, the best thing to do is to be somebody like Mr. Velcro, I don't know what his name is, and not only continue to sell your invention, but other people want to put it on their products, so they have to pay you to put that uh, part of your product there. So some of these inventors <clears throat> are going to be Samuel Morris with his telegraph, and telegraph, that's the dots and dashes that sends Morris code, um, the sewing machine, safety elevator, Thomas Edison with his light bulb and the steam bo uh, boiler. And we'll look at some of these in particular. So Thomas Edison becomes one of our most important inventors. And he <clears throat> not only is an inventor, he does invent some of these things, but most importantly, he sets up a research lab and employs a lot of people who invent things that are done in his name. So he will invent <clears throat> a light bulb, a phonograph, a major motion picture camera, um, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of products. But what we have to think about that's important for the economic um, advantage of the United States is that when these things are invented, all of these other businesses will be created as a result of that. So think back a gazillion years ago when you went to the movies. Remember those times when you could stroll into a movie <clears throat> but think about all the products that you touched or used as you were just walking into the movie a ticket the concession stand the seat now these days the movies don't have a stage or curtains but back in my day big curtains would draw back um, seats cushions what is there curtains still okay because if it's a widescreen. Okay. I'm thinking like red curtains yeah. like on our stage. There are, That's and it's like okay. Commercial. Thank you. I didn't I don't even recognize that. Um, the light runners that go along the uh, aisle, <clears throat> all of those things have to be purchased, bought, made by other people. And so that becomes an important part of this innovative business and how um, um, the United States becomes this major economic superpower. And I will come back if you need this. So there's Mr. Edison in all his glory in front of his research lab. Daily life is going to dramatically change as a result of these new technologies. So when we get these new technologies, um, I also want you to think about the oldest person that you know <clears throat> and think about how that older person reacts to new stuff such as I've lived 80 years without a cell phone, why do I need one? Or I've lived 80 years without somebody in my house telling me what the temperature is. Think Alexa or whatever, or Siri or whoever. So this becomes twofold. One, inventing these things, and two, getting people to use them and why they should use them. The telephone's going to debut in 1876, and all the other th stuff that goes around a telephone. <clears throat> Think about, again, the wires, the poles. We don't even know how to answer a telephone. The first people that typically want to talk about the phone, the answer is ahoy. Pick up the phone. Imagine if that would have stayed ahoy, because that's what you say to introduce yourself on a ship. Alexander Graham Bell invents that. Um, he was a teacher for the hard of hearing or the deaf, and he's trying to create an amplification device and in the process invents the telephone. Bessemer process, which purified iron uh, to create steel, which was going to make skyscrapers and suspension bridges possible. So we're going to stop with our notes there and head over to our assignment that I will explain. So we're going to look at inventors and inventions. And again, part of this process is it's great to invent something, but you have to get people to use it. So we're going to head over to the Great American Invention Campaign. 
and <clears throat> we're going to look at this and I will be walking around giving you your invention. So advertising agency, this is the rise of advertising because people have to know why they need the stuff that we're getting ready uh, to uh, invent. Um, you'll be competing with other agencies to create an ad campaign and a marketing campaign. Your account could bring in tons of money and instant fame for you and your company. Your boss has practically demanded you win this account. Since this is a brand new invention, your marketing campaign must introduce the new product, make the public or business want to buy this invention. So this just isn't a poster about a typewriter. It is an ad campaign. You have to get me to want to buy a typewriter. I have lived, and this is what you should think about, I have lived my whole life without a typewriter. Why do I need a typewriter? Um, <clears throat> you will present your campaign to the board of directors. That's just me. We're just turning it in. So this is a paper pencil um, pro uh, assignment. Show Now, when I say show, it doesn't mean you have to draw pictures. What you're doing, showing what life was like before the invention. What did people have to do before we invented uh, a telephone or before we had a typewriter or before we had a vacuum cleaner? Why you need this invention? Why you have to buy this invention? Some immediate positive change, long-term change, some kind of catchy slogan because, again, it's an ad campaign. And you must use the inventor's name in the campaign and some information about the inventor. And again, it's an ad campaign, so you have to use uh, some kind of color. Okay? Uh, this is due on Monday. We'll work on it today. And then all day tomorrow you'll have in class uh, to work on it. <clears throat> and it's due October 5th. All right? So I will walk around, give you the paper, give you your inventions. The inventions will be twofold. They'll either be business-related, like the elevator, I don't think you're going to ask anybody to put an elevator in the house or personal like a camera. All right. So any questions about that? All right.